Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, where we take the time to speak with small cap executives right after they put out important news, and important news it is today from David Lukacs, CEO, Cabin North America, trades on the CSC, out of the stock symbol KABN, went public just a little bit earlier this year. So for those of you new to the story, you know that Facebook showed us that sharing our data is a major issue. Major legal changes came as a result of that to protect our data. What Cabin basically does is they turn the problem of data privacy into a profit for individuals while providing businesses that relied on these old business models with new and compliant business models in order to transact with people like you and I. And the press release today, Liquid Avatar and the Cabin Network launch cloud-based biometric identity verification for self-sovereign identity, digital wallets, and verified credentials. That's a mouthful. David, let's talk about that. Welcome to the show. Hey, George. Great to be here. Thank you. Man, one thing I love about this decade is the convergence of these unbelievable granular technologies. But man, are they a mouthful sometimes to really to really uh, understand. So let's break it down first. The bi- the biometrics part. Right. That's popular or it's becoming popular on most phones and, and other devices. So why is your biometric any different? Doesn't just sound like the everybody else's biometrics? Well, you know, biometrics are biometrics. I'm who I am. That doesn't change. It's uh, how do I measure and monitor that and verify it is really important. And what we've done is is we've taken biometrics and made it a, a, a cloud solution for our services rather than a device solution. So if your device is lost, compromised, stolen, hacked, nobody can get into your biometrics. So nobody can spoof the phone, add another user, do that type of stuff. We, we believe it's way more secure to keep the biometrics inside the cloud controlled by you. So this is another layer that's independent of my phone, my tablet. I actually didn't realize that that was a risk that if somebody took my phone or tablet that I buy biometrics on, that it could be spoofed. Yep, yep, there are, there are ways to add other users. Um, there's been issues in the US with um, certain healthcare data and, and users are added to a phone. So you've got two sets of biometric on a phone. It, it can get, um, again, not easy, but a pro can do what a pro can do, right? So. So, you know, and we've seen lots of situations where people are, you know, stealing uh, credentials on a phone and then using it to get into the back door of a company, let's say a crypto exchange, right? So, right. So our application, why resident on the phone uh, or device is important because it allows us, it enables by having the, the app on the device, it enables us to take over the camera. So we need it. All, so, but we don't store data on the device. It's all cloud-based. Man, I don't know, maybe in layman's terms in a minute, how do you do that? Do you, you, do you put your thumb down on the phone and somehow bypasses the, the phone's biometric sensor and, and go to the cloud? Or how does that happen? It'd be great to, to understand yeah, that. We started with facial recognition. If you think about okay. the basis of everything um, that we do, especially in North America, You know, there's very few of us. I mean, some of us may have a Nexus card with retina identity, but for the most part, every piece of identity that we have is, it requires facial recognition, our driver's license, our passport, all that type of stuff. So we've started with facial recognition and then we can move on once we've done verified facial recognition and other um, uh, validations, we can then move on to voice, fingerprint and all kinds of other stuff. There's lots of opportunity for the future, but you know, it's uh, kind of the keep it simple, you know, this principle, we want to, we started with uh, facial recognition biometrics and that's what we use for, for cloud. The other part, it's almost, it's almost like I've taken the press release uh, term by term, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of talk and you talk about here, identity verification for self-sovereign identity, right. right? So is, what is that? Let's talk about that. And why is that really important to me at the end of the day? Cause right now I can, I can, get on a Zoom, get on Amazon without all that stuff. What is it? Why is that important to me? Well, in a real simple term, self-sovereign identity is the ability for you to control your identity and all the information around it. It's not that complicated. It's a fancy- And don't I control it right now though? Well, do you? I mean, you know, who controls some of your username and password and your data? You don't control all of it. There's lots of firms out there that have data on you and control that on centralized platforms. You know, um, self-sovereign ID means really, or identity means that I am in control. It's all about me. I, you know, 
Uh, I control what's in my wallet right now. Um, but online, do I really control everything? There's lots of players who have lots of data and lots of control over that data. Self-sovereign identity means I'm, I'm in control of my identity and the components around that. And that's what Liquid Avatar is designed to do. It's designed to empower users to you know, own their identity, to manage their self-sovereign identity. You know, uh, you talked a few minutes ago or at the beginning about Facebook. We know how many issues they had with identity. Um, so we've really focused the last few years and the term self-sovereign identity has been a developed term, but we've, uh, you know, started off as sovereign ID and it started off as digital ID, but the term, the vernacular that is in the industry now is self-sovereign identity. And we believe based on our relationship with Trust Over IP Foundation and some of the other things we're doing, you know, that Cabin and Liquid Avatar are definitely, you know, a leader uh, in that space. So if I understand it correctly from what you just said, and I always like to try and break down to layman's terms. Okay, I see what you're saying. So right now, if I have my passport with me, uh, I show it when I get to the airport or I show it certain places, but then I put it back in my pocket. Same right. thing with driver's license. If I want to get into a, into a bar right. in Las Vegas, I show my driver's license, but I put it back in my pocket. What you're saying right. is in the digital world, I'm showing my ID and then people are keeping that ID. You're right. Uh, and so what essentially Cabin is now doing is saying, hey, that ID is going back into your pocket. Self-sovereign ID. Powerful. Absolutely. It's built on, a, on, 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 on I mean, I, I won't get technical, but it's built on, on, in our last interview, we talked about this triangle, but it's, it, there is a relationship between the issuer of, of that identity, the holder being myself of that identity, and a verifier, somebody who wants to verify. And if you use digital or verifiable or verified identity credentials, we like to call them, um, then you have control of that. That's used for that moment in time and then taken back. So it's just for a verification process. Nobody keeps a copy of it. Now, if you think about a lot of the things out there, um, yeah. you know, people are keeping copies of stuff. Now, at, at the baseline, somebody has to have a copy. If you're validating your identity, um, even for our network, we have to prove that you have a piece of government identity. But once that is done, that stops. So we don't need copies of anything else. Neither will any of our partners that use our verified identity or verified access credentials, one being uh, a credential that is connected to your identity. So it's only, like your driver's license, it's only for you. But a verified access credential may be a verified ticket to enter a concert, which does not have to be connected to your um, identity. So it's all about ensuring that you have control over it. And again, lots of people are talking about it, but we're a baseline. Yep, that's for sure. Support it. Yeah, we're here to support all the other efforts that others are doing by empowering the user. So let's talk about some plain English value proposition because right. there are three people, I think that are, there are three constituents there. There's what's the value to me? What's the value to a business? And then what's the value to cabin and a shareholder? So let's talk about first the value to me. The, the first obvious one, so we can get that off the table is from what you're explaining, self-sovereign ID means if I'm controlling my ID, things are just better when I'm in control than everybody else. So I, I get that. What are other benefits for me? Well, it, 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 you know, think of your wallet today. Your wallet might be, you know, this thick, but everything in your life might be this thick, right? So you're not going to carry a wallet in your back pocket that is, you know, hugely thick. The other thing too is, is so all your data can be stored with your, with you controlling it. So everything, think of everything you touch and everything you do, you know, you would be ultimately in control of that data and those credentials, you'd know when they're being used, how they're being used, and you'd create private transaction between yourself and the verifier. So no one else is involved. So we never see it. No one ever sees it. The other thing just to add to that is Liquid Avatar provides those tools and services to allow you to do that. And we do that at no cost. So having said that, how does cabin benefit? So, and how does Liquid Avatar cabin and the network benefit? Right. Well, because at the end of the day, you're a unique individual with your own likes, needs, desires, wants, the whole bit. And um, we want to work with you to bring you offers from marketers and things that you like that are better. The the big deal behind self-sovereign ID and our verified identity platform is that in the liquid avatar platform and the cabin network, there is only one user to one account. You can't have multiple accounts. You can't fake spoof, do anything because 
the biometric control ensures that regardless of the username and password you use, your biometric control is the single determining factor. Right. So you can imagine, even for Agoracom, if you knew that all your users were real users, there's no fakes, there's no bots, what would be the value proposition to you know, other companies like myself and ourselves that, that want to talk to investors? It's a very simple situation. If we can work with you on a partnership basis, we never rent or sell any data. Everything is permission-based. We can bring you opportunities that are unique and valuable to you. And marketers will, will pay maximum value for that because they know you're real. So cabin benefits from that, from fees, commissions, bounties, all that type of stuff. So right. yeah, so a public company who knows uh, who, who knows a certain who, who who wants, I guess, to talk to a certain kind of investor, maybe older, maybe mm-hmm. younger, whatever, maybe millennial, maybe will pay will pay for that, and will probably pay a premium for that. And but, but they'll, they'll also it, that, verified right, but they'll also give that user maximum value because right. they're. The highest efficiency exists because you're reaching a user that is a known and verified user and has a want, need, or desire to connect with someone like yourself. So, you know, think about the competition in athletic shoes, right? If I'm if I'm a fan of something like, let's say, Air Jordans, and then when something new comes out, you know, I can get it first from Nike really quickly because Nike knows I can create a relationship with them and I'm a real person, right? So, it's um, we've got over 250 vendors already on board and there's more coming on board on a regular basis. And we're seeing more and more companies understanding what we're doing. We're very fortunate in some respect and, and in others, it's going to take time. Self-sovereign identity and what we're doing is gaining a huge amount of speed in the marketplace. And we've aligned ourselves with some of the best companies out there and organizations. I mean, we're a steering member of the member of the trust over IP foundation so we've really put ourselves in a position where we believe we can succeed. Our team is an excellent team of executives that have, have proven successes. I mean, we've had our own, you know, we've, we've won at some deals. We probably lost at some deals. But overall, our scorecards are really, I believe, great. And we've got lots of experience. So at the end of the day, uh, companies and organizations are gravitating towards us because we spent three years building this. And, and we're ready to go where others and you know are, are just talking about where they want to be uh, plus the the uh, big business corporations they almost have to come to you because legislation is telling agoracom facebook amazon you can't take bob and mary's data anymore and just profit from it that's done so you're gonna have to find new business models so aren't you essentially giving platforms uh, a new business model? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you, you brought that up. I, it's better be brought up by you, but uh, regulation is also pushing people towards what we're doing. Um, uh, again, self-sovereign means you're in control of your, your data and your identity and your credentials. So that fits nicely in with um, GDPR in Europe, CCPA in California. Um, uh, Pepita is being in Canada is being developed, uh, reevaluated to look at that. We're seeing, um, you know, Ontario and BC sort of leading that pack. Uh, you know, the, the head of the Treasury Board discussed last week, you know, Ontario wants to bring out a digital wallet and digital identity services starting in January to, so that they can have credentials in 2021. So, but again, let me be clear about here. A lot of people are talking about this. You know, they're using buzzwords. They're getting, oh, yep. yeah, you know, and, and it's good because it it brings brings more value to the industry. But we're there. We're we're at the point now in, in today's release, we talked about credentials and we talked about, uh, you know, data, data guardianship. And if I could, you know, just talk for about credentials for a second, but we're yeah, already at the point where we're working with ecosystems to itch, issue digital credentials, verified identity credentials, credentials that you will be able to use to do certain things. And, you know, hey, we give all us an example, to- give it, give us an example of something before you get into that. What's an example of uh, these kind of credentials? Well, I'll give a couple. Um, a verified identity credential could be um, uh, a student ID, right? And a student ID that, that can take an exam at university. They're, they're verified, their identity is verified and their student information is verified and they have the credential that they can pass along so they can start and take an exam or a class. So they can get the academic, you know. And credential is different from ID, right? 
ID is, is ID is I've I've made a fake ID to take a test for David and the right. person really doesn't know it, but they let me in because they see a fake ID and they don't know. Right. Where a credential is an electronic passing. So I would pass you to a verifier to your phone. We'd scan phone to phone like a QR code and it would then ping my biometrics and I'd have to answer with my face before that credential was validated. So everything has to work in that moment. So it's a very, very simple process and you can visit our website, you know, liquidavatar.com and see more on that. But so student ID, um, purchasing something online, an e-commerce transaction over a certain limit. You know, the, the credit card companies could make sure that you are you by having you validate with a credential that has a biometric validation, a verified identity credential. It's about time. It's, also, it's about time. Know, right. And then and that saves billions of dollars in fraud. You know, and then, you know, one of the most timely things, um, you know, that, that will come down the pike will be, you know, how do we verify that, that you have immunization, a vaccine or some other factor, right? How will that change? Getting a vaccine or getting a test or having, you know, uh, been negative for a test, how long does that last? You know, is it really you that's providing that information? So by adding verification of identity with self-sovereign credentials, you sort of you sort of putting all the pieces together, and so I think in the next few weeks, you know those that 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 you know follow us will see more and more of this coming to light. And and again, it's a massive opportunity because it applies to everybody, right? The, everybody as you've been talking, I've been thinking about. I, I don't think there's. I don't. It, it applies to every single person. So you've got other really great technologies out there that are used by a percentage of the population. And as long as they got the percentage, they're massive business. But in this case, like I was thinking while you're talking, look, you and I are both married. We've been out of the game for a long time, but you hear, uh, we know that one thing about the digital age that's blown up are dating services, you know, sure. dating sites, mobile dating sites. And you hear these horror stories all the time from friends of people who say, I don't even know if that was, I don't even know if that was John Smith. Right. That I met with. He said he was John Smith, but how the hell do I know if that's actually John Smith? So I got to figure their opportunities there in order to make those businesses better that, hey, you want to go on a date with John Smith? Yeah, uh, we're verifying that that's John Smith of, you know, Scarborough, Ontario or whatever it is. And you actually know that that's the person. So it's it's this is this applies to every single person on the planet. This is non-negotiable. Well, it, it, we have 100% reach. We, we, we want to be one of a handful at the, at the front of the pack um, because, again, it's such a large market. But some of the things you're talking about, I mean, getting people back in to visit, visit their family in senior care facilities. So a verified credential will allow people who are, let's say, immunized or test negative for something to get in and make sure that everybody is safe. It, it adds a level of safety. It, safety. The other thing too is, and you're talking about something, but we think of dating for the young people. What about people who, it's called a sweethearting campaign. What about seniors that are affected with people who try and take their money, you know, and, and fake out yeah, who they are? Yeah, yeah. There's so many things. You know, really what, what we're starting to see is how can a verified identity credentials be used to help people start getting back to their lives? Right, getting back to things that they want to do. So there's a there's a whole opportunity there um, in healthcare alone, but there's government services, e-commerce, uh, esports, joining a tournament. How do we know that you're not a ringer? Right? You know, there's there's lots of opportunities here for this, um, but everyday occurrences. And then there's also the fact that you know, if I'm a if if I've got a minor in the house, you know, then I can create data guardianship so that their biometrics may not be used to answer an inquiry. Mine may be as the adult or the, or the guardian. And so there's lots of things that we've put in play. All these services that we're talking about, George, are all free to our users. They're all free. Yeah, that's the way we're. And then on and a transactional really basis after that, everyone's happy to, everyone's happy to, for that a piece of those transactions. I wouldn't even know, right? If I got a liquid avatar and I transact at Amazon or the cases, I don't have a clue that, a few pennies per share, a few pennies have gone over to cabin, for example. So right. you're still getting a maximum value deal because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting what I'm expecting and whatever happens behind closed doors between yeah. you guys. Let me, um, let me ask you a question because you would have the, and the final question because we can talk for an hour on this, but you've got your thumb on the pulse of the corporation side, the B2B side, because I'm you, clearly you're talking to them every day. What is your sense for 
how long it's going to take until we just get to that tipping point where, yeah, this is just the way we got to do business from here on in. Uh, so let's bring in cabin or, or other people, but you know, in this case, cabin, when do you think we get to the tipping point? Are we almost there? Is it still another year away? Uh, cause clearly everyone's talking about self-sovereign identity. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and you're way ahead of the game. You're way, you're so ahead of the game a couple of years ago that, you know, people even understand what you're talking about. Right. Uh, and now here you are. So what's your sense for that, David? Where, when do we get that mass adoption where the corporations say, just say, Unless you got self-sovereign identity, we know who you are. You know, we don't want to do business with you. Well, you know, I'll, I'll kind of back to e-commerce in the late 90s, George, and you and I know each other going way back to then, you know, we're a little bit older. So, um, and and for those that don't know, um, my first firm was instrumental in creating the e-commerce um, uh, payment solutions for the banks and, and businesses and consumers allowing credit cards to move online in Canada. But... Um, and at that time, I remember, you know, late 90s, my sister, who's only a couple of years younger than I do, is coming to me and saying, no one will ever shop online. No one's ever going to shop online. You know, <laughs> right? And she reminds me that she says that and she only buys everything online. So, so um, you know, plug for my sis. But um, at the end of the day, self-sovereign identity is, is a momentum play here. If it affects 100% of the market, then the growth opportunities are exponential. Sorry, like it, so we're, you know, we're not trying to grab it all at once. Um, and we know there will be other players. I mean, you know, again, there have to be. It can't be one absolutely. guy, right? That's no chance. Absolutely. But we're talking to governments. We're talking to healthcare. We're talking to e-commerce. We're we're talking to so many different um, groups, and those groups will naturally bring their constituents to our platform. So it's not like we have to go shopping for users. Corporations will bring users because yeah, they want. To that's the beautiful part about it. You don't have yeah. to go out. You don't have to spend $10 million just trying to acquire users. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been unbelievable. We're, we're on the phone every day around the world talking to organizations from, you know, um, uh, literally healthcare organizations that, is do, that are doing testing to, you know, some of the biggest, you know, football clubs on the planet to back to you know sports teams and and restaurant chains who want to make sure that you know when things open up again they can make sure their that, that their staff is validated so people can have confidence in that even travel think about it there was a recent survey in the industry that said you know people 16% of people are still price sensitive but 84% are afraid to travel because of covid so how do you knock that down and make sure that the person, not you, but the person beside you is safe to travel so that you don't get sick? So there's all these things. And, and by putting all these new solutions in play, and our solution is really, really simple. It's it, the technology. We brought it down to a very simple solution that includes corporations like the issuers or governments like the issuers. Again, the verifiers who want to check on people or want to validate a certificate and the holder. And we're, we're making it very simple. Man, we could talk about this for another hour. And I got a feeling we're going to look back at interviews like this a year from now and say, remember back then when we we're still trying to explain to people how this all fits together. And I don't, I don't poo poo that by the way. Uh, it's just the process we have to go through, but it sounds like Dave, what you're saying that everyone's, everyone's getting ready for this. It's unstoppable. They're getting ready for it. And we're not that far away. You know, 2021, David, safe to say, is going to be a, a, a great year for self-sovereign identity for, bio, you know. I think even before that, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm not foreshadowing anything, but we're, we're, we're excited where we are today. And, you know, we still have a few weeks left before the end of the year. And, um, you According know, my calendar, it's the first week of December. Yeah. So for you to say, you know, we're, we're December the 2nd. So yeah. for you to say before that, <laughs> that's 28, I, I, that's 29 days. Yeah. We're, we're, we're hustling, man. We're really hustling. I mean, again, um, our, you know, what makes us unique is our solutions are built. We've got a, a gamified platform, an engagement platform. We're making it easy and fun for people to engage with us. There's no cost. And, you know, so everybody's starting to go, wow, this is really unique. How do we get involved? So we're, we're excited. Again, this is, um, we believe we're a momentum play. Uh, we, we, we wanted to make sure for our stakeholders and our shareholders that, that we're building long-term value, not short-term spikes. So it's, it's, 
it's important to us um, and, and to our core investors that we build value because we believe that every user in our system will also have a retained value that can create a huge enterprise value and a potential, you know, who knows, but a potential exit strategy. Dave, congratulations on today's announcement on what you guys are achieving, uh, your, uh, your, your, your joining of the Trust Over IP uh, Foundation uh, as, a, as a steering member. Uh, clearly you're doing all the great things and you're being acknowledged for it. So I can't wait to, normally I'd say here, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in 2021, but now I would say, I can't wait to see what happens the rest of 2020. Uh, well, we're, we're, you know, we're happy to, to surprise people in the next several weeks. For everyone that's been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcasters, uh, you've heard what David Lukacs had to say. We know that this concept is still not the easiest one to grasp. People are really getting it, but we know that, look, it's new and it involves, you can't absorb it all just in this conversation. So get to the Agoracom hub for Cabin, take a look at their profile. We've got some, you know, really easy to understand, try and summarize this all for you. Um, and then hop over to liquidavatar.com. Just go to that alone. That's my favorite just to see in a real visual way, um, you know, what, what this company is doing and how it's gonna change things. And do your due diligence, guys. This is the decade where we've said, our thesis is this, there's gonna be more wealth created this decade from new technologies, the convergence of all these great granular technologies than the last two, maybe the last three decades combined. Uh, so do your due diligence, check out Cabin, K-A-B-N on the CSC, don't say we didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time.